Well, welcome. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at arithmetic series. Now, you might say, haven't we already talked about arithmetic series? No, we've talked about arithmetic sequences, but we have not talked about arithmetic series. Now, the two do kind of relate to each other in a way. Um, and if you haven't done so already, you want to make sure that you watch that video on an arithmetic sequence so you know what we're talking about. But to begin with, let's look at the story problem to help us see how a, an arithmetic series and arithmetic sequence relate to each other. Um, in this, in this uh, story problem, it says, suppose a virus enters a community and the number of new infections each week forms an arithmetic sequence. If there were six cases the first week and in each week thereafter there were four more new cases than the week before, the sequence is described by the following formulas. Now we have up here the recursive and the explicit formulas for this particular situation. So recall for an, uh, a uh, recursive formula, you always start by defining in that first row what the first term is. So we know that we're starting with six uh, uh, situations where we have, or six infections with this virus. So we have six patients that we're starting out with. And each week thereafter, we're adding four more uh, in addition to those six. So we'd have our previous term, a sub n minus 1, plus our constant difference, which would be 4. We would do that for the second term on. Now, the explicit formula, again, we use that constant difference, d, or in this case, it's going to be 4, times in parentheses n minus 1, plus our first term, which is going to be 6. We could simplify that by distributing the 4 through. So 4 times n would be 4n. Don't forget to take 4 times the 4, or 4 times the 1 to get uh, 4n minus 4 plus 6 would simplify to be 4n plus 2. So that's your explicit formula. Now, to my left here, we have what we could do as the, we could set up the sequence in that second column there by saying, again, the first term of the sequence would be 6. In other words, that first week we would have 6 new patients. The, or six new cases. The second week, we would have four more, so now we'd be up to having 10 new cases that second week. The third week, there would be 14 new cases. The fourth week, there'd be 18 new cases. The fifth week, there'd be 22 new cases. Now that fifth week, that 22 new cases, doesn't mean that there's 22 cases total. That just means that during that week, there'd be a 22 additional new cases. If I wanted to find out how many sequence, or how many, um, total cases there would be up until that point, I'd have to add up 22 plus 18 plus 14 plus 10 plus 6. And that's what a series is. A series is the sum of a sequence up until that particular week or that, that particular term. So in other words, over there on the right, that right column, those numbers, the 6, the 16, the 30, the 48, the 70, that would be our series. So the way that we could read that series, if I wanted to figure out how many total cases, the total number of cases there'd be after the third week, I could see, I could look at that series and see, well, there'd be a total of 30 at that point. Because that 30 represents taking and adding up all those numbers in the sequence from that point backwards. So we would take the 6, the 10, the 14, add those together, that would give you a total of 30. That's what a series is. So let's look at a couple more things. We're going to look at, uh, behind me here, we'll look at the graph. We'll look at how to represent this using summation notation. And then we're going to look at the formulas we'd use to find the sum of a series to a certain point. So let's look at that graph. Let's look at some of that information now. So this here is the graph that we couldn't see before. So what they've done for us is they've uh, graphed out in red. This represents the sequence. So the first term, the second term, the third term, you can see that just continues to increase by the same amount. Now you can look at, when we look at the series, it increases exponentially. Now, um, in summation notation, just to review summation notation, so the symbol here means that we're trying to find the sum. Anytime we see that symbol, it means we're looking for a sum. Below that, we tell we say what we're going to start out with, what term value, what term we're going to start with. So this one we're starting with the first term. In the top, we'd put what term we'd be ending on. So if I wanted to find the sum of the first five terms, I'd have 1 down here, i equals 1 at the bottom, and just a 5 up at the top. To the right is usually going to be an explicit formula telling us what we're going to do with each of those values here. So, uh, for example, with the explicit formula that we have for uh, the sequence here that we're dealing with, remember it was 4i plus 2. 
Well, let's seeing it this way, this means I'm going to find the sum from the first to the whatever term I want to end at. So if I wanted to find the sum of the first five terms, I'd put 5 up here for n, and then I'd put 1 in here for i, so 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 would give me 6. That gives me my first number. So I would put the 6 down. Put 2 in here for i, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, so I would take in 6 plus 10. And I would do that, and I would get those five numbers, and then I would add them all together, and that would give me the sum of the series. And again, this is in what we call summation notation. Some things to make sure that you uh, understand. This first piece here is what I started out talking at the beginning, is that the indicated sum of the terms of a sequence, that's what we call a series. Now, when we're dealing with a sequence, we call each piece in a sequence, we call them terms. But the numerical sum that we're working with in a series, we call that the value or the sum of the series. So the first number in a series would be called the first value in the series or the first sum of the series. The second number would be the second sum of the series, the second value, and so on. Now the rest of it, if you don't want to write that down, you don't have to. That's just referring to the fact that if we have a finite sequence, we would have a finite series. Or if we have an infinite uh, set of numbers, we'd have an infinite series. These are the two formulas that you want to make sure that you understand. Now let's make sense of what all this uh, is with all these different colors and letters here. There could be two different situations that we're working with. One is they could give us the first term of a series. They could give us the last term in the series, and they could give me and the number of terms in the series. If that's the case, if, I give, if they give us those three pieces, this is a formula we're going to use, where S sub n represents the total sum of that series. n, again, represents the number of terms divided by 2 times the first term plus whatever the last term is. Now, sometimes they don't give us the last term. Sometimes instead of the last term, instead they give us the constant difference. Well, they still give us the first term and the number of terms in the series. Now if that's the case, look at this formula. That formula hopefully looks familiar to you. This formula is similar. It's not the exact same, but it's very similar. It's related to the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. Because we start out with n divided by 2, just like we did up here. Remember our arithmetic sequence, the explicit formula for that is d times n minus 1 plus the first term. Well, this is d times n minus 1 plus 2 times the first term. So let's look at an example here. It says a student borrowed $8,000 for college expenses. The loan was to be repaid over a 100-month period with monthly payments as follows. So they give us the $120 would be the amount that we'd pay the first month, then $119.50 then $119, and so on. So how much did the student pay over the life of the loan? Well, first we have to figure out what we know. Well, I know the first term of the sequence, a sub 1, then is 120. I know the last term in the sequence, so a sub n is $70.50. And I also know that there's going to be a total of 100 months that we're going to pay this over, and n represents the number of months. So there's going to be a total of 100 months, or 100 terms or values in this sequence or series. So now, the fact that these are the three pieces I know, that tells me I'm going to be using that first formula. Now, here's what I encourage you to do. Anytime we use a formula for the first time, always, as we're trying to memorize it, always write it down. That's the best way for your brain to memorize it. Otherwise, if you just look at it, you're learning by seeing, but if you look at it and write it down, you're learning by seeing and doing. So your brain is going to have twice as good of a chance of memorizing it. You're going to memorize it twice as fast. So the sequence or the formula that we're going to be using is the one where it's n divided by 2 times your first term plus your last term. So for this particular situation, n is 100 divided by 2. Now, granted, you, could write, you might recognize, well, 100 divided by 2 is 50. You could write that down, but I'm only writing this down like this just because if I wrote down 50, people would wonder where you get the 50 from. So for the first, pro first problem, you might want to write it out so you have something to look back at later. But then the first term was 120, and the last term is $70.50 or 70.5. But when you put this in your calculator, you end up getting 
$525 would be your answer. There is a follow-up question here for this particular one. It says, what was the total interest on the loan? Well, if you subtract what you uh, borrowed originally, the $8,000, we end up getting that we paid $1,525 in interest here. Let's look at another one together. This one says, a store displays cereal boxes in layers as in the drawing shown of four layers here on the right. How many boxes are there if there are 10 layers? So again, we're not trying to figure out how many are in just the 10th row or the 10th layer. We're trying to figure out how many total boxes would there be if you stacked them all up like we have here. Well, we know the first term here is 2, that first layer. The second layer would be this one, obviously, as 4. The third layer has 6. And the fourth layer has 8. So you can look at this, and we could get a couple pieces of information that we need. Well, we need to know what the first term is. The first term is 2. We don't know how many are in the last row, so we don't know the last term in the sequence. But we can see from this pattern, we can see that we're always adding two more boxes with each row. So our constant difference is 2. And we also know that there's going to be a total of 10 layers. So that means that the n, the number of terms in the sequence, would be 10. So the formula we're going to use in this case is going to be that the total sum would be found by taking n divided by 2 times your constant difference times n minus 1 plus 2 times that first term. So again, write this down so every time you use this formula, write it down so you'll memorize it faster. Be careful. It's really easy to get the pattern of seeing that, oh, this is very similar to the explicit formula that we did with the arithmetic sequence. It's very similar, but don't forget about that, too. So let's plug in the numbers that we know now. So n is 10, so it's going to be 10 divided by 2, times our constant difference, which is 2, times our value for n again, which is 10, so it'll be 10 minus 1, plus 2 times our first term, and our first term is 2. Now, if you plug this in your calculator, make sure you use the parentheses. If we simplify this to, say, 5, and I type this in as 5 times 2 times 9 plus 4, the calculator is going to give me the wrong answer because what it's going to do is it's going to do order of operations and give me this answer first and then add 4. But instead, I want to make sure that my calculator does this part first and multiplies that answer times 5. So that's why we want to make sure you use the parentheses. Regardless, you end up getting your answer which would end up being 110 boxes. So again, that does not mean that there's 110 boxes in that last row. That means that if you were to add up all the boxes to figure out how many boxes you'd need for the display, you would need a total of 110 boxes, serial boxes here. Okay, let's look at this one. This one here is very similar to the previous one. So what we're going to do is I'll, have, I'll help you guys get this one started, but I want you guys to work it out on your own. It says, in training for a marathon, an athlete runs 7,500 meters on the first day, 8,000 meters on the second day, and 8,500 meters the third day, and so on. So we can see that we're adding 500 meters each day. What is the total distance the athlete will have run over 30 days? So again, we know that on the first day, First term in our sequence would be 7,500 meters. And we know that the constant difference here, we're adding 500 meters more each day. So it's the constant difference is 500. And we know that we want to figure out how far he would have ran, what would be the total distance, not just the distance on the 30th day, but how many total meters he would have ran over the course of those 30 days. So n is going to be... 30. So I want you guys to take a minute and figure out what equation we would use and write that down just to get that practice of memorizing and associating that formula with this particular problem. So write down the formula and then I want you to fill in the pieces of information and solve to figure out what would be the total distance. So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, so let's see how you did. Now you should have recognized that we'd be using this formula. And then we plug in what we know into that formula, which would give us this. And then, again, plugging that numbers, those numbers into your calculator, 
you would get 442,500 meters would be the total distance he would have ran over the course of those 30 days. We're going to skip that next example and skip down to this one. This is a slight twist on the ones we've been looking at. It says the main floor of a new auditorium is planned to seat 800 people with seats arranged in 20 rows. Each row will have two more seats in the previous row. How many seats should there be in the first row? So this time, I don't know what the first term would be in this sequence. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I know, though, in this time, I know the total number of people, the total number of seats that, would, that there should be in the auditorium. There's going to be 800 seats in the auditorium. In the previous examples, we've tried to find the total, like the total number of cereal boxes that we would stack or the total number of meters that he would run. In this case, we, we already know the total. So we know the S sub N is 800. We also know that the, uh, with seats, the, there's going to be a total. So N is going to be a total of 20 rows. There's 20 rows in the auditorium, so N would equal 20. And we know that each row is going to have two more seats than the previous. So my constant difference is going to be 2. My a sub 1, the first term, is what I'm looking for. That's what I'm trying to find. So again, we're going to be using that formula. S sub n equals n divided by 2 times a constant difference. Whoops. Times n minus 1 plus 2 times the first term. That's the formula we're going to use. So we're going to plug in this information. So we're going to put the 800 again as your total. That's going to equal your n, which is 20, divided by 2, times your constant difference, which is 2, times n, which is 20 minus 1, plus 2 times your first term. And the first term is what our unknown is. That's what we don't know. That's what we have to figure out. So let's simplify this. Now, again, simplify within the parentheses first. Well, 20 divided by 2 is 10, but we don't want to multiply that by anything by 10 yet. 20 minus 1 is 19, times 2 is 38. Distribute the 10 through. Oops. And you get 380 plus 20x. Now we want to subtract 380 from both sides. We would get 420 equals 20x. Divide both sides by 20, and we get x equals 21. So in that first row, there would need to be 21 seats. And then that way, if I add two seats to the next row and then two seats to the next row and do that for all 20 seats, or all 20 rows, rather, we would end up with a total of 800 seats in that auditorium. Okay, I want you guys to try one completely on your own now. So why don't you try this one? It says, one version of Herman Melville's novel, Moby Dick, has 640 pages. So we know that the book has a total of 640 pages. You decide you want to read the book in 30 days, each day reading one page more than the previous. How many pages should you read the first day? So I want you to figure out what you know here. It's very similar to the previous one. And I want you to plug it into your formula and go ahead and work that out. Now I'm going to give you a hint. Your answer will be a decimal. It's not going to be a nice little integer as we've seen in some of the other problems. So not to worry if, worry if you get a decimal. Chances are it's probably the right one. So why don't you guys pause this video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did. You should have started by identifying this information and then seeing that you would need to use the same formula that we did before. Plug that information into the formula and you end up getting, again, 6.83 repeating or approximately 6.8 pages. So on the first day, if you started by reading just under 7 pages and every day added one more page, so if the next day he read um, just under um, 8 pages or 7.8 pages and so on, by the time you get to the 30th day, he would have the entire book, all 640 pages read. So that's it. That's uh, all we need to know about uh, arithmetic series. Again, the most important piece is to make sure that you have these two formulas memorized and know when to use these two formulas. So good luck now as you work on your assignment.